course, thinks he wants to save the planet, uh, but he thinks he wants to save it only for people who are not white, uh, because people who are white, he says, are not representative uh, of those people in London who actually live in London. He's wrong about that, of course, as he's wrong about so many things. Uh, he's also in the papers this morning uh, for trying to silence the scientists who doubted the efficacy or the usefulness if you like, of ULEZ and its expansion, which is coming uh, in just over a week's time. Let's talk to Peter Fortune, Deputy Leader uh, of the Conservatives and London Assembly Member for Bexley and Bromley. Peter, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you, Mike. I mean, uh, I, I, I scarcely know where to begin this morning with Sadiq Khan. I mean, this um, website and this guideline that he's got for the marketing and the branding of, of London to suggest that white people are not representative of London is quite shocking. He hasn't, to my knowledge, made any kind of statement about it. We've asked him to come on the show here. Uh, of course, we haven't heard back. What, what do you make of it? And, and, and to your knowledge, has he said anything about it? Uh, to my knowledge, no. Um, this, is, this is not a, a subject I know a lot about. I read some of the reports in the newspaper yesterday. I think that the mayor's office put out a response saying that it was uh, written by a junior member of staff. I mean, I, I, I don't think that that's, uh, that's credible. I, I think that if you're the top of an organization, you should take responsibility mm -hmm. for it. But look, you know, any kind of politics that seeks to drive people apart, that seeks to, 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 to divide us, to make us feel like we're different is wrong. That's not the way that you grow consensus. That's not the way that you govern. And even if somebody in the mayor's office says that they didn't mean to write it, I do worry that they might just maybe intrinsically think it. Yes. So I would advise the, the mayor to go away and, and have a, a conversation without coffee with some of his members of staff. Well, I think perhaps what he might want to do as well is to address the people in London um, who happen to not be from an ethnic minority because they might not all necessarily be from Britain originally. There might be a lot of white people here from other European countries, for example, which as far as I know, there are. Um, but he's having, you know, he's out there celebrating Black Pride Month. He's having a black festival in Trafalgar Square. He never has any white festivals. I mean, you know, I'm not suggesting he can't have both. But why does he only have festivals that celebrate ethnic minorities? And one of the interesting things, um, I, I mean, you know that I, I come on this morning to talk about ULES and the reports uh, from uh, Imperial that yeah. covered up by the mayor's office. One of the interesting things that come out from the report about ULES, the Jacobs report, talked about how it would impact um, people of colour. Actually, the, the implementation of ULES to the whole of Outer London, from the Jacobs report, from the independent report that was that was done by the Mayor's Office and TfL, says that it will have a, a, a really bad impact on uh, BAME uh, residents. It will really hit people who are driving private hire vehicles. A lot of that will be from ethnic minorities. So it's interesting. What you're saying is there are these big kind of media displays of, of of diversity and yet actually when you get down into the weeds of it when you look at the bones of something this policy around the ULES expansion that he's driving through is going to hit those people that he says he cares about the most yeah well i mean it says that i'm not even sure if that's particularly true more interestingly he's also accused this morning of trying to silence um, yeah. various scientists as you say who questioned the claims because there are so many holes in his ULES policy um that if it was supposedly a mask uh, to stop you from getting COVID, um, it wouldn't stop anything, would it? Well, and, and, and that's uh, the reason I was asked to come on to talk this morning. Um, it, this goes down to a report from uh, Imperial College, another part of Imperial College, uh, that's in their research, it suggested that the impact of ULES would be would be negligible. It would have uh, less than a 3% impact on, on air quality. In fact, uh, Dr. Mark Stettler, if I've got that surname right, said in that report that you shouldn't expect the ULES expansion to, to make or to fix a problem of air quality in outer London, and the quality of air in outer London is a debatable subject anyway. But the point is, the crux of this is that the Mayor's Office got hold of this report and they wrote to uh, another uh, professor over at Imperial, Professor Frank Kelly, and essentially asking him to, to squash it, to get rid of it. Mm. And there's emails that we found, and this has been reported in the Telegraph and the Mail and other uh, publications today as well, well, we found via freedom of information email exchanges where the mayor's office is writing press releases for um, this department of Imperial College, and and we don't think that's right. That one of the core principles of of science is that you have open and transparent debate. The mayor of London often tries to describe himself as the most transparent mayor ever. There are questions. Well, he is, he's transparently a fraud. <laughs> well, well, well there, there are questions. To, there, there are questions as to why is he trying to cover this up, right? Now, through this whole. ULES saga and you know I've, I've been quite heavily involved with this over the last couple of years and I mean there is I mean you could write a book about this process um, and hopefully throw it at him afterwards 
But if you, if you look at one of the reasons that the expansion of ULS to outer London um, has been qualified, it's, be it's because it's purported to um, improve air quality, right? And this report, the import from Imperial that was paid for by the Mayor's Office, um, it was funded over, um, I think it was over 800 Well, let's, let's get it right. Paid for by the taxpayer, shall we say. Paid, paid for by the tax office. That's absolutely right. Yes, it's public money, which again highlights the fact that, that we should have open and transparent mm. debate about the, the science. Um, the fact that that uh, report is the one that's been used to drive through this, this concept of uh, the expanded ULES improving air quality makes it even more concerning that reports that opposed it from equally credible sources, in fact, from the same institution, were, were squashed by the mayor's office. Right. Let's, let's get back to the point, right? The point is that there was an independent report from Jacobs, and this was released years ago. I think I've come on this program to talk to Kevin about it previously which show that there's negligible impact um, through expanded ULES. There is negligible positive impact through expanded ULES. In fact, as I talked about earlier, there's a, there's a real impact on people's well-being, on charities, on small businesses. What we've found now is there's another piece of research that says if you expand this ULES zone, it doesn't make that much of a difference when you, when you look at it compared to the, the impact it's going to have on people's lives and well-being. So why has the Mayor's Office tried to squash these reports? Why has it aggressively pushed through a report that was paid for by public funds? And and, that and to a large to... extent, by the way, almost a million pounds has been handed to this guy, uh, Frank right, Kelly, yeah. from, uh, from yeah. Imperial. Uh, nearly a, a million pounds. It's an awful lot of money. It is an awful lot of money, yeah. Um, and that's because the expansion of the US zone, in my and others' view, is that it is purely a tax break. TFL's finances are yeah. in a terrible state, and that's because of the mismanagement of the mayor. We know what happened with COVID. Government stepped in to provide six billion pounds to cover that the money was lost through the, um, the the dropping off of ticket sales during COVID. Other parts of TFL needs to be looked at again. We need to look at the fact that there are people travelling for free because they live with or related to somebody that are yeah. working for. That's for ridiculous. Totally we need to ridiculous. look at the hundred million pounds that can be saved from the final salary pension. We need to look at the exorbitant salaries of a huge number of top executives over six figures, uh, you know, too many of them. There are real savings to be made there, but the mayor won't do that because that's too difficult. What's easier to do is to expand the ULES zone, take finance, take revenue for two years from the poorest in London, from small businesses, from charities, and then you use that as a bridgehead to move to a, a per mile user charging model, which you'll be able to do because he's got the cameras yeah. in place. I mean, the point is this. Um, Sadiq Khan is now operating as if London is his own private fiefdom. And he doesn't seem to listen to the people. Uh, he does a consultation uh, which proves that not, uh, not a significant amount of people actually want uh, nothing yeah. done about it. They don't want it expanded. 80% or more of people living in London do not want to see it happening. He's doing it anyway. He claims he's listening to London. He's not. He's giving taxpayers money away uh, to uh, a professor at Imperial and do, who's doing environmental research that he wants him to do and wants, and then wants the, the, the end result to agree with him. You know, it's an absolute scandal. And some politicians have already asked Keir Starmer to suspend him from the Labour Party. Um, others have said that Keir Starmer should resign. Sorry, not Keir Starmer, that Sadiq Khan should resign, not because of you, Les, but because of this racial uh, business that happened over the weekend as well. I mean, would you be calling for him to at least consider his position or calling for Keir Starmer to suspend him at this point? Well, we could do something even better than that. There's an opportunity to get rid of him next May. So we've got a great candidate in Susan Hall, who I've worked with over the last couple of years. She's promised that she'll get rid of you, Les, on day one. She's uh, making some really uh, common sense uh, policies. She's, a, she's a, uh, addressing Sadiq's failures, his many failures, by the way, right? Um, if you're looking at a police service that's in special measures, you're looking at a fire brigade that's in special measures. Despite some of the uh, rhetoric that you saw displayed in the media over the last couple of weeks, he's had an awful record in terms of building family homes, right? He always talks about starts. You can't live in a start, mm. right? I mean, I joined a gym, it's made no difference. You've got to do the actual work, right, to, 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 get, the, to get the positive outcome. Um, so in, in May, in a few short months' time, we've got a real opportunity to get rid of Khan and put Susan Hall in as the mayor, and she can start to, yeah. to clean up some what, of the mess these days. What, these will it make, what difference will it make, do you think, to the outcome of the election, that it is now going to be first past the post? Is there any um, statistical knowledge on that? I think I think you know th those of us that work in the in the political bubble, Mike, we like to debate and, and you know kick these things around. I think. Uh, most people will on the day they'll go and vote for who they think will make the biggest difference to their lives and that's why we need to talk about Sadiq Khan's record I'm very I'm sometimes I'm reluctant to go after people personally I don't like personal politics it goes back to what you were saying 
uh, right at the very beginning of this interview where we were talking about uh, divisive uh, techniques or divisive advertising. I don't like to do that, especially when you've got a mayor whose record is this poor, a mayor who's put up council tax by 57% over his tenure, a mayor who's failed to fix uh, TFL, you know, the, the, the real infrastructure changes that it needs, it's a man who's seen uh, crime increase under his watch. I mean, he, he's, got a, he's got a record of very, very poor delivery, if not the poorest delivery. Well, he has. Um, but what, but, so what, but what, what will difference will it make if, if people vote? Because people always say to me, well, if everybody hates Sadiq Khan so much, how can we keep getting re-elected? And one of the reasons, perhaps, is that the way the voting system works helps him. So it, will that be different if it's first past the post? So I, th I think it will make a difference. I think it will make a difference. But the, the thing for us to do as the Conservative Party in London is to show and prove that we, we care about London, that um, we've got ideas and policies that are going to help improve it. And Susan's, Susan's doing that already. She's yeah, already but you also need to get the vote out. So with respect, yeah. respect, I would suggest that you start telling people that if their vote counts more now, it counts more than ever, and they should go out and do it. That's it absolutely does, yeah. The vote counts more than ever now because we really need to get rid of uh, Sadiq Khan and we really need to get a new mayor. And Susan Hall is the person to clean There you up. go. That'll be 500 quid. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Good to see you. Uh, Peter Fortune, Assembly Member and Deputy Leader uh, of the Conservatives in London. Also